Our next guest began his journey with The Mandalorian, writing and directing the fan favorite episode, The Prisoner. Well, three years later, he's still writing and directing episodes, but is also executive producing the show as well. And he's being joined by the newest member of the Children of the Watch. Give it up for the multi-talented Rick Lamayua and Katie Sackhoff! <laughs> So say we all. Uh, <laughs> you gotta do it. You gotta do it. I mean, you gotta right. do it. I had to. No, Katie. You gotta, you gotta do it. Yes! <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Have think I, ta so. I taken up enough of the. <laughs> Listen, Katie was given lessons on that backstage, and I'm just saying, you should charge for it. You're great. <laughs> It takes a lot of effort to look like you're not putting effort into something. I just, little do they know, like we sat there forever trying to figure out the right pose and um, there were many, many uh, tries many before yeah. that one. Yeah, that's the one that won. And that was a boss <laughs> move and we all know it. Yeah, and you're, you're one of those people that can pull that off and it does look super effortless because <laughs> you're you. Good, good, thank now you. Now this season, Katie, we've seen your character dealing with a lot of internal struggles. How do you approach portraying Bo's subtext to the forefront? You know, Bo is an incredibly complicated woman, you know, um, and I think this season the most important thing was I really wanted to start her in a place of complete loss. Um, she'd given up. She's lost everything at this point, you know. She's lost her home, she's lost her people, she's lost her sister, she's lost the Darksaber, she's lost everything. And I think that she's second guessing everything that she's done up to this point. Um, and so I think that with Bo, it's just a, it's, it's literally just a lot of thought. There's so much thought, there's so much going through her head at every minute. Um, and um, how do I do that? I just trust my beautiful director <laughs> and make sure that, that the, the, the thing I'm going for is what's conveyed. You know, she had a really crazy arc this season and we really wanted to hit every single beat to make sure that it was actually translating. And I'm gonna let the applause finish because I love seeing people get their flowers. Now, Rick, you started your Star Wars journey as a director, but now you parlayed that into executive producing the series as well. What's it like to now have a larger say in the direction of the series? Uh, it's been great uh, to be on the show for as long as I have. I was, you know, I did the second episode of, of, uh, of our show. And so our, I feel like each season um, I've had this great working relationship with with John and Dave, they're, they're both such incredibly collaborative, uh, creative people. And so all along, there's been this, you know, support of the filmmakers that come in to, to really flex and, and show and bring your point of view. And, and so that's always been very open to me. And so I've also was asked by John to write on the show on, on the first season and, and, and also write an episode the second season, so I've, I've been a part of this process of being able to see the show from beginning to end, even before this season when I came on as EP. So I think it sort of became more of an organic process and that there was a lot of trust between us. Um, <laughs> but, and that's really, uh, I think, where it came from, and so I'm excited to be a part of it. So. <laughs> Oh, 
that's your buddy. <laughs> now, Katie, how has your characterization of Bo changed from animation to live action? Oh my gosh, so much. You know, when, when I'm in the, the sound booth, I can just do whatever I want. I can move my body and my face in a myriad of different ways, and I don't have to worry about it as long as my face is doing it, or my voice is doing what it's supposed to do. And so it's almost, it's, it's so much easier. I say that the days I'm in my helmet are actually easier days because I don't have to think so much. You know, at, at that moment, it's just really just what is my body doing? Does it look right on camera? You know, big movements are usually better because it doesn't, you know, your head doesn't really convey that much unless you're moving it a ton. Um, and, and so in, in the booth, I just basically trusted Dave. So, you know, uh, it was much, much easier. And I don't know about y'all, but my face moves a lot. <laughs> So the hardest thing for me to do is actually sit still and like be as still as Bo because in my head I'm like, I'm on fucking Star Wars. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But she just looks cool all the time. I don't I'm not that cool. <laughs> you are Katie Sackoff. You are very cool. <laughs> Remember who you are, girl, because we know. <laughs> now, Rick, the series has grown both in storytelling and in scale since the first season. What are some of the challenges in continually upping the ante while still maintaining overall quality? I mean, we, we are making an incredibly ambitious show for, for television, and it's, it's really it's, it's something to be here um, in Star Wars Celebration, uh, because when we first started, we were the first uh, series uh, that was doing Star Wars in, in, in sort of television form. And so, and now we have all these great shows that have come and grown from it. And I think with that, the ambition of each project, of each season grows and grows because the story grows, the expectations grow. But I think at the end of it, it it's always been about this core relationship with uh, Din Djarin and, and Grogu. And, and I think, you know, at the, I think we have just been trying to service that story, uh, that story of this, you know, reluctant father figure and his and his child, you know, and and where that adventure has taken us has sort of pushed the show and pushed the, the boundaries of the show. And so, as that relationship has grown and 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 Din Djarin has been on this journey to sort of do right by these decisions he's made, it's sort of forced us and put us in a position of having to make the show bigger, and that's taken us to different places. And this season is certainly um, a, a, a big example of that, because now it ain't just one Mando. <laughs> there's a lot of Mando. Now they get a mommy. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a mommy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're gonna do this again. If Mando Mommy is not trending by the time we get off this stage, <laughs> then we got problems. <laughs> now, Rick, I have another question. Being a fan of Star Wars, what's it been like for you to be able to help create new stories and characters for a whole new generation of fans? I mean, wow, is all I can say. I mean, I, look, I, the first film I saw in the movie theater was Star Wars. That was my, introduction into movies and the cinema was through George Lucas's world and I'm sure many people who are in this building can say the same thing right uh, and so you know so I was sitting there as a kid with stories in my head and and playing with my my action figures and toys and every Halloween dressing up <laughs> you know and I had no idea that Many, many years later, all that great research I was doing <laughs> would come into me being a part of telling Star Wars stories. Uh, so it was, it's been an amazing <laughs> journey for me, you know? And so, and like Katie said, I think every day we walk on set and we see the amazing work from the, the incredible, talented magicians that help put the show together, whether it's the costume designers or the set people who build the sets. And you look at this world and you say, holy, I guess I can't, holy, I'm in Star Wars, right? You go, 
it's streaming, right? I can say streaming, you can... Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. can. Holy shit, I'm in Star Wars, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, streaming, streaming. It's okay, Jody beat you to it. <laughs> so, and so it's, you know, so we always have to be like, okay, we get to do this. We have the privilege of being able to continue George's legacy and, it, and we take it very seriously. But we're also fans in the same way, so we're we're excited that we get that opportunity. So. Well, I'm really grateful. <laughs> it's been an absolute honor to sit here and talk with both of you and to hear about playing in that great sandbox known as Star Wars. Exactly. But at first, do you guys have anything else you'd like to say to, I don't know, the fans here and at home? Oh my gosh. You know, I, since my very first celebration in 2018, I, um, I've, I have been accepted and, and brought into this community and, and it has meant so much to me. I, I, you know, this character is such a part of my life now over 10 years and, and to see her, you know, come out of animation into live action and be accepted as much as she has. and is just, it, it still blows my mind. Um, and I, I'm just so thankful to every single person that not only watches this show, but it's keeping Star Wars alive. So, you know, um, thank you all so much. Thank you so much for stopping by and for hanging out with us. We can't wait to see what you've got coming for us well, in the next couple of weeks. You never know what you're going to see, but we're very excited. <laughs> I just cannot yeah. believe how much is left for two episodes, because I know what we shot. <laughs> I, my brain is like, there's only two left? Oh, my god. Well, we can Y'all buckle up. Yeah, there's a lot happening in the next two episodes, so we're really excited about it being out there. So thank, you. thank you guys so much, and we look forward to seeing it. This season has been a blast so far, and we cannot wait for more.